Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Lewis, Lewis Speaks 2023, and today I want to talk to you all about outgrowing friendships. You know, it's a sad reality, but a lot of the friends that we have today, we won't have tomorrow. You know, I used to subscribe to the belief that once a friend, always a friend. I used to be the ride or die there no matter what. I was loyal to a fault. I used to tolerate so much in my friendships because I thought that this was what you're supposed to do. If you're a friend, you go through thick and thin. You put up with the nonsense, you know? Um, I have since huh, revised that concept, that concept of toxic loyalty, that concept of weathering all storms and putting up with all kinds of disrespect? No. I realize that a lot of people, a lot of friendships, a lot of friends are self-centered. They don't know the meaning, the true meaning of support, of offering support. They oftentimes will only provide support when it's beneficial. I realize that a lot of the friends that I had were a direct reflection of my past unhealed trauma. And let me explain that a little bit more. You know, in my situation, I realized that I had a lot of unhealed trauma. And as I did the work, I started to notice that a lot of people no longer fit with the person that I was becoming. We started to have a lot of clashes, we started to have a lot of differences. Some just fell off naturally, you know? Like the leaves on a tree, they just fell off, you know? And as I became a healed person, and as I continue to do my work, I'm starting to notice that a lot of friendships are starting to just fade away. You know, I realized that a lot of us operate from trauma responses. The trauma responses include fight, flight, fawn, and freeze. You know, on me, I was a fawner. I hate to admit it, I was a fawner. What is a fawner? A fawner is someone who is a people pleaser. A fawner is a person who is willing to set themselves on fire just to keep other people warm. A fawner is someone who feels that their survival hinges upon other people's approval, other people's acceptance. So I was that, I used to fawn, that was my trauma response. As I heal from that, and as I realize that I don't have to set myself on fire to keep other people warm, that's their responsibility. As my boundaries became better, I started to notice certain relationships fall to the wayside. A lot of them depended on my brokenness. And this is very important. A lot of people that you associate with depend on your brokenness for their feeling of wholeness. The moment that you work towards being whole, that's when you start to notice they don't like you anymore. You start to notice disharmony, you know, discord, tension. You know, sometimes it's passive aggressive. It's that subtle, you know? They start to take these subtle jabs under the guise of humor. They'll use humor. Oh, I was just joking with you. I was just joking. No, they weren't. They're trying to keep you in that box. They're trying to keep the old you, you know, because that's the you that they benefited from. They benefited from your over-functioning. You know, you doing the most. They benefited from that person, and so they don't want that to end. So when you try to break free from that role that you once were typecast in, when you try to break free, oh no, that's when there's going to be conflict. And so that's okay. That's okay because you realize that they didn't really like you. They liked the you that they could benefit from. You know, And that's oftentimes what happens when you heal. When you heal, you start to outgrow certain relationships. You start to outgrow certain friendships, you know? Um, I know when I think about my past friendships that I used to have, 
They were all based on a broken identity. They were all based on me feeding them, you know, me doing all the legwork, me taking all the initiative, me scheduling all the trips, me doing the most. And I realized that, wait a minute, the moment that I took a step back, the moment that I said, wait a minute, why don't one of you handle this? Why don't you do? They started to get all up in arms. And so I'm like, okay. Once again, I've learned the importance of assessing people's character, observing their choices, and then making a decision whether or not I want to participate in their lives. And that's what I've done so far. And that's definitely served me because I realized that a lot of people, they pretend to like you. They don't like you. They like the you that they can benefit from. A lot of times also with some friends, they're threatened by your greatness. They're threatened by your greatness. Your greatness is their danger zone. They don't feel safe around your greatness. And so they have to go to lesser individuals. They have to go to people who they feel safe around. Oftentimes people who are dysfunctional, people who are traumatized and not doing their work. They have to go to those people in order to feel whole, in order to feel safe. And like I said, once again, don't stop being great because other people can't respond to you or other people don't want to associate with you. Don't stop being great. Be great because your greatness is your legacy. It's, only, it's really the only thing that will last when everybody else decides that they, that they no longer want to deal with you. You know, when they decide that they no longer want to deal with you and be in your life, the only thing left is your accomplishments, your achievements, your greatness. So continue to rise. And I think oftentimes, you know, we are, we are afraid of our greatness. I think we are afraid of our strength. We are afraid to be great. We, at times, run away from our role, run away from our destiny. Because the truth is, when you're great, it means that you're going to have to let go of certain people, places, and things. You're no longer going to identify with the people that you once identified with. You're no longer going to identify with the spaces that you once identified with. And your greatness is going to charge you with the responsibility of finding new great people, of finding greater spaces. And that can be very, very anxiety provoking. That can be very fear inducing, knowing that you have to move away from your comfort zone in order to realize your greatness. That's terrifying. That is terrifying. And acknowledging that is essential. But at the same time, every new venture that you take in your life is going to be laced with some level of fear. There's going to be some level of discomfort. And that's called growth. You have to be willing to accept growth. I know in order for me to move away from fawning, I had to be comfortable with other people not liking me. I had to be comfortable and get comfortable with sitting with that discomfort of them being angry with me, of, they, of them projecting their own disappointment onto me. I had to be comfortable and realize that that's not my bag. That's their issue, you know? I had to get comfortable with, once again, disappointing other people in order to move past this people-pleasing behavior. Because I realized you can't please people. You, you really can't. People are never going to be satisfied. They're always going to want something from you. They're always going to want something. You know, and that's going to keep you in a cage, always indebted to them, always responsible for their feelings and their, their, their actions. No, no. And so I had to learn that. That was my personal lesson. And now I'm okay. I'm okay with people being angry with me. I'm okay with them not wanting to associate with me anymore. That's fine because they make space for the people who are genuinely meant for me. The people that like me for me, Lewis for Lewis. And that's what you have to definitely come to terms with. You know, does that mean you're going to sit alone some days? 
Yes. Yes, that does. But once again, that's a blessing too because it gives you the opportunity to enhance your greatness. So that's a wonderful blessing too. But I want to say it's okay to outgrow friendships. It's fine. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily bad people. It could mean so many different things. It could just mean that you two just have outgrown one another. You two are going in two separate directions. It means sometimes that they lack the awareness that you have or vice versa. They have the awareness and you don't have that awareness. So it's about recognizing, you know, a lot of times it's just selfishness. Sometimes your friends are very, very selfish and they don't realize what being a true friend really means. Being a true friend means sacrifice. Being a true friend means sometimes I don't necessarily want to go to this place, but I know you like this place, so I'll go with you to support you. You know, I'll go with you to support you as a supportive friend. These days, as I mentioned earlier, people only support you when it's beneficial. They'll come to your shows if they're in them. They'll come to your shows if they can get some nice selfies and network. There always has to be something in it for them in order for them to do something. That's, I guess, human nature. But is it genuine support? Is it genuine friendship? And I think we've lost the definition of what it means to be a true friend. True friend. And so that's also another reason why people outgrow each other. You outgrow your friendship because they just don't know. They don't know. And sometimes, you know, something in our season of grief, in our season of transformation, sometimes we, we don't realize that we're not being good friends. You know, in our attempt to survive, we become very selfish, self-engrossed, and we don't realize how we're hurting our friends. You know, um, this is seen, for example, when your friends go to college, they get so stressed out by the workload and the expectations that they don't realize that they're not investing in the friendship anymore. You know, I guess the friendship starts to move down the list in their priorities, you know. Um, and so they don't realize that. Or if they're grieving the death of a parent or if they're grieving the death of a loved one or if they're grieving, you know, just growing pains in general. They'll start to become distant. They'll start to isolate and they don't realize how that affects their friends, too. You know, they have a saying which I like and also at the same time dislike. It's like, check on your friends. Check on your friends, you know? And I like that because for one, you are checking in, you are making sure that you're consistent with checking in. But I don't like that so much because for one, sometimes you need more than just a check-in. Sometimes you need to actually spend some time with people, not just a phone call or a text just to check in and put that on a to-do list and scratch that off your to-do list. Nah. I also feel that, you know something? Checking in is a two-way street. Checking on your friends. Well, are my friends checking in with me? Are they making sure that I'm good? Or are they always expecting me to do the legwork? Are they always expecting me and trying to typecast me into the role of counselor, into the role of caretaker? Because sometimes our friends can definitely be put in those roles and those are unwanted roles. I think in a healthy friendship, it should be a balance between both people providing support. But in some friendships, that's not necessarily the case. There's always one person watering the relationship and another person receiving the water. It's never equal, you know? There's always one person who talks so much about themselves while the other person just listens. There's always one person who's doing the most in terms of planning the trips and then there's another person that's just going along for the ride. You know, so it's got to be healthy. It's got to be a healthy balance in a healthy friendship. And that's why it's okay to outgrow friendships too. Because when you realize that you're the one doing the most, you're the one putting in all the effort and they're not doing anything. Oh no. Oh no. That's when you have to say for one, this is not working for me. I have needs too that are not being addressed. And I'm out. I'm a firm believer of this. I told you 
Now I'm going to have to show you. I've had friends who I told them and I've confronted them about how their behavior has been affecting me. I told them, giving them an opportunity to change. They made no changes. So I told them, now I got to show them. Now I have to go ghost. Now I have to distance myself. I am no longer a ride or die friend. No. Nope. I've learned early that to be a ride or die, you just die. Mm -mm. Can't do it. Can't do it. So my thing is this. It's very simple. Reciprocity. Mutuality. Give and take. It's okay to take. But do you give? And I think, to be honest, if there are two givers in a friendship, two people that are committed to always replenishing the friendship, pouring into the friendship, that friendship is going to grow and thrive so lush that even on those days or those moments when there is, how you say, difficulties or a, a life-changing event, you could lean into the, 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 the overages, you know? They put so much into the friendship that it's now there's an overbalance that you can lean into on those difficult moments, you know, because you've, you, you, you've fortified that friendship, you know, it's kind of like a bank account when you invest so much in it, so much in it, so much in it, and you happen to have a difficult moment in your life, you can turn to that bank account, that relationship account, and you could take some, you could withdraw temporarily, of course, temporarily. You can withdraw from some of the excesses because you know that you poured so much into it. But once again, temporarily, because you continue to replenish it so that way it doesn't get depleted. But people don't replenish into their relationships and their friendships. They don't. They just have these expectations. I think friendship in this generation is just trash, if you want to know the truth. People don't know how to be friends. And how to maintain a friendship. And they aren't interested in maintaining relationships. This is the me first generation. And that's it. So. It's okay. It's okay to outgrow those friendships. It's okay to just move forward with your life. It's okay to build new friendships. That really honor the person that you're trying to become. And not the traumatized individual that you were. You know because that's the thing. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the friendships that we have are a direct result of the trauma that we have. You know, it speaks to the trauma. But as you heal from that and move forward in your development and your growth, you start to realize that those old friendships no longer speak to the person that you are. And you hope that those friendships can grow and accommodate the new person that you're becoming. You hope that that's the case. But sometimes it's not. And when it's not, you got to say peace. So I hope that this video was helpful. I definitely like, subscribe, share, and I look forward to your experiences. Definitely hit the comments, share your experiences with our growing friendships. I'm definitely interested in hearing your journey. Peace, y'all.